Hey guys, welcome back to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In this three-part video series, I'm going to go in great detail how I installed my rain catchment system. So let's get started. Since I like to keep my videos right around the 10 minute mark, if this video just ends abruptly, part two will be in the description below, so you can check it out there. I release my videos on a weekly basis on Thursdays, so it'll be there next Thursday. If you're finding this later, then it's already there. So I purchased four barrels from Craigslist for $50 total, so they were like $12.50 each. Um, and they held car wash soap, so they were pretty clean when I got them. I just had to rinse them out and get the soap studs out, soap suds out. So I purchased everything I need to do to connect these four tanks together, have a funnel on the outside of the house, and have a shutoff valve towards the house so that I can hook in a pump to pump the water up and a filtration system, but it stops right where before the filtration system and pump. Right now I'm at about $200 to do this project, which I don't think is too unreasonable. One thing I didn't know about um, these barrels is that there's different threads. This is a fine thread, which is just a standard thread. Do I have one? I hope I have one. So this is your standard thread. It's a fine thread and this is a coarse thread. So one of the bungs, these are called bung holes, easy there now, threads into that. No problem. I'm just going to apply some plumber's tape and I'm also going to do some, some dope, which is a liquid plumber, plumber's tape, basically. Um, but I had a special order of this piece right here. It is an adapter from the coarse thread to the fine thread so that this will screw into there and this coarse thread screws into there. So all these are going to get Teflon tape and some dope to make sure I have a solid seal. The first thing I need to do is mount these in the place where they're going to go and make sure that they're kind of solid. I'm going to install a drain on these tanks so that if I need to move the trailer, I can just turn a valve, a ball valve, and it'll drain all the water out of all the tanks. The 55 gallons of water weighs about around 480, 500 pounds basically. So I'm going to have 2,000 pounds of water weight here. I'm pretty confident my floor can support that. If not, I'll have a escape hatch in my basement. I mean, brilliant. Who doesn't want that? If you were going to do something like this, I, would, uh, I had some scrap steel left over. I should have saved it and I could have put it on top of here. I have a steel beam that runs foot in from each side of the walls. I could have had that, that five inch C channel facing up like this and sat it down and then rested these on top of it and then strapped them down to that. Hello! Um, what I'm going to have to do is rip some two bys on some 45s and do all this fancy dancy stuff. and make two little channels for them to sit inside and then I can strap them down to it or I don't really know how I'm going to fasten them. They don't really need to be too secure because they're not going to be moving too much. If you, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, I cracked my windshield getting all these parts. I put the PVC pipe in my trunk and I shut the trunk and it was up against the front windshield and it cracked it. That's like a $200 mistake. So this project just doubled in price by one stupid mistake. So to start this project out, I'm going to be making those channels to hold these tanks and I'm going to put them in place. Stay up there. No, I, want to, I want to come down. I want to say hello. High five. High five. Good girl. Can you dance? Can you dance? I cannot dance from here. I will fall. That's dangerous. Dad, don't do that to me. All right, Pete. Your air time's up. What do you mean my air time's up? Dude. People come to see me here. They like me. So I have my tanks where they're going to go. I'm going to put the coarse thread because I feel like that's going to be the most likely to leak. I have the coarse thread up top and the fine thread down at the bottom, which that doesn't matter at this stage right now. I'm going to measure the diameter maybe. Diameter. Circumference. Diameter. Yeah. Are you with me here? I'm going to take this number, which I believe is the diameter. 23 and a half. Divide that by 2 is 11 and 3 quarters. I'm going to butt into the wall and I'm going to measure 11 and 3 quarters. And from there, I'm going to measure over 23 and a half inches. So those two marks represent the center of the bottom of the, the water tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two 2 by 4s the length of the trailer, just like this, so that it carries the weight of that towards those outside beams that I have. Um, it's not going to carry all the weight. There's obviously going to be some sag, but the floor also has two by sixes running this way with the proper hangers. This is three quarter inch plywood, and I believe every square inch is supposed to hold a lot of weight. I'm not sure what that weight is. So in theory, this floor should be able to support this. 
But just to keep them solid and in place, I want to put these extra 2x4s in here. I do much better at this type of stuff when I've had a few drinks and I don't care as much. So I'm just, just you know, procrastinating so that the, uh, the liquor sets in. This is a great idea, though. I mean, this is cool. I've never seen this in a tiny house. Toot toot, that horn is getting tooted. I need to hurry up and cut some boards because the neighbors are going to yell. You could rip these on an angle to cradle the barrel, but the barrel's got a taper in it, and that it won't sit on all points unless you made it like custom, which would be almost impossible. Damn, that mosquito was just sucking me from ever. God, if I could only get a... <laughs> That's inappropriate. Inappropriate joke. Four and a quarter, both ways. So now that I have these marks, uh, I have my center mark right here on both of them. I know that this two by four needs to start here at four and a quarter inches. I'll snap that line, all four of those. And then I know I can nail my two by four down and I can nail this vertical piece here. This vertical piece is really gonna take the weight and transfer it out to the uh, outsides. This piece is gonna hold the barrel into like a, into a cradle. Are you done rambling? You've been rambling for nine minutes. That's as long as this whole video is. And I'm gonna go cut pieces that fit in between the, uh, from wall to wall. So I cut all my pieces to fit in between the two walls and I'm just gonna nail up some L's basically. So I took this mark that I had in the center and I transferred those marks to the ends. So there's marks here and marks there. I didn't snap lines because if they're not running perfectly straight, it's not gonna be the end of the world. I'm just gonna, gonna check to make sure that that was a good idea. This is important here. Three and a half inches. My gosh, that was lucky right there. You can see on this side, it's not touching on the, uh, on the lip of the, the drum, but it's touching on the middle two points right here, these two ribs. So I think overall that's gonna work good. When I got on my lumber from my house, I had these straps holding them together. I'm gonna nail these straps up underneath the two by fours, and then I'm gonna put it over the top, and I'll use this metal fastener that they use to, uh, to cinch it down. So now that I have these tacked in, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna nail two nails into each of the joists. I'm just looking for nail holes from my back nail on the plywood. 909 and I'm done nailing. Shut the compressor off, put it away. I'm gonna install the adapters onto the tank and then I'm gonna mount them in place and then I'll run the plumbing into the, uh, into the tank. I always repeat words 10 times. This adapter I bought is, the model number is S64 times five, male drum thread to two inch two inch BSP female, uh, but they're only five, six bucks each. And the, uh, the link for these will be in the description below. I've got two inch smooth on the inside to two inch threaded male, which will screw in here and will screw in here. So the first thing I need to do is apply Teflon tape to the threads. On this coarse thread, it's pretty hard to apply it. It's not thick enough. If I had some wider stuff, it would be better. So when you're applying the stuff, you wanna go with the thread so that when you're tightening, when, so when you're tightening the threads on, it's going to tighten down on the Teflon tape. If you were to go in the wrong direction, it would loosen and it would bind up on itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the top of the thread. I'm going to hold a little bit away and I'm going to just stay on the peak of the thread and I'm going to go around. And the reason I stayed two inches away is so that I can overlap it, remove my finger, and keep going. And if you look at the way I'm holding the Teflon tape, it's so it'll roll away so I can keep tension on it. If you were to hold it in this direction, it would be hard to, to keep it tensioned. Now these have a rubber gasket on it. I'm not gonna touch the rubber gasket. I'm gonna stay away from it. Now once I have one layer on all the threads, I'm gonna jump back over to that first thread and I'm gonna put another layer. I'm gonna do three layers so I've got three layers on each thread, and I'll break it off there. I also bought this, which is, um, plumbers call it dope, but it's a uh, pipe PVC pipe joint compound. It's a liquid Teflon tape, basically. So they say stir it up, and they say to apply it just to the threads. Um, since I'm not really trusting it, 
I'm going to put it on the threads and I'm going to put it on the the female side. I'm going to work it into the threads. I'm not going to go crazy with this stuff. But since these tanks are going to be laying on their sides, I definitely want it to be watertight. If these leak, I'll be swimming in my bedroom. All right, so I've applied the dope to both the female and the male end, and I'm going to screw it in, making sure I don't cross thread it. Bring it to hand, hand tighten. Now they have rubber um, clamps that go on this type of fitting, or and also this type of fitting. I don't have one, so I'm just going to use a big ass plumber's wrench. That seems tight enough. And I'm going to put three layers on all the threads. So I went around three times there, but I covered all the threads just once. So now I'm just going to go around again. That was two. That was three. Now this end, I want to make sure that it's smooth on it. And then I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to make sure that those are seated, seated in real tight. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply dope to both the male and female ends. When you're applying the liquid dope, you want to go with the threads just the same way you did the Teflon tape. Otherwise, you'll unthread the uh, Teflon tape. When you're applying Teflon tape, you don't want the Teflon tape to come over and hang off the edge of the fitting that you're doing because that uh, Teflon tape will get into the pipe. And if it was like a, um, a plumbing fitting where water was coming through, which this is basically, that can cause problems later. It can clog different things. When you're applying a PVC threaded pipe to a fitting, um, I watched a YouTube video and they said to bring it down to its so it's hand tight. Then once you have it hand tight, they recommend that you do f two full rotations with a uh, a pipe wrench or a pipe fitting thingy. I don't know what it's called. Okay, this is this is gonna be funny. Ready? Oh yeah, baby. What's your name? Come here often. Hand tight, two rotations. I'm gonna do quarter turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm telling you that. That man knew what he was talking about. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Part two will be in the description below once it's uploaded. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you liked the video and felt it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to show me some love, click right up there and show your support for Tiny House Customs. Also, leave your comments down below letting me know what you thought. Thanks for watching.